folks, this is Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to this week's episode of Art Studio Chat. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to blend acrylic paints. Now, I've taught over 25,000 students now around the world through the Learn to Paint Academy. And probably one of the biggest challenges that most of my students have is with acrylic paints and how to blend them. And I often get the same questions time and time again, so I thought let's do a video where I talk to you about the best ways to approach blending with acrylic paint. Now, one of the big problems with acrylic paints, of course, is they dry out very quickly. And I have my studio here in subtropical climate. It's very warm, hot, and humid all the time. And so I struggle with this myself, and I'm gonna share with you exactly what I do to overcome this big challenge. So one of the first things I want to just mention before we get into the tips on how to blend with acrylics is to know the difference between blending and layering. So one of the things that I've done in developing my approach and my style is I've minimized how much actual blending that I really do in my painting. Most of what I do is actually layering. It's putting one layer of acrylic paint over another. And so I've eliminated as much blending as I can with acrylic paints. That said, I still want to share with you some tips, but keep that in mind that a lot of painting that you do, you don't necessarily have to be blending that much, not, or certainly not as much as what a lot of beginner to intermediate painters think you need to do. So you can eliminate a lot of your blending um, and save yourself a lot of headache in the process. So probably the only area where I really do a lot of blending these days is in my skies, where I want to integrate two different parts of a sky together and I want to blend those. Or if I'm doing something that's sort of curved in shape and I want to show dark to light around that curved shape, then obviously um, there's some blending involved in that or doing a gradient in the sky. Apart from that, I don't do a lot of blending. So have a think about when are you actually blending and when are you needing just to put layers of paint down. And I think that might simplify the whole approach that you have towards blending with acrylic paints. Okay, let's talk about tip number one here in blending acrylic paint. And probably the biggest thing that stumps most beginners, um, especially when it comes to blending acrylic paints, is something very simple to uh, overcome, and that is the quality of the materials that you're using. Now, obviously, when you're a beginner, you want to save money. I understand that, and uh, I've done that myself. I've bought cheap um, paints and, and uh, paper and things like that to paint on. And that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks for most beginners. Um, so when you're buying cheaper paints, the pigment in that paint is, is, there's just not as much pigment as professional quality paints. So of course, it automatically becomes harder for you to blend. And then when you combine that with putting it onto say watercolor paper that's a, a cheap watercolor paper or a you know, very cheap um, canvas that you maybe get from a $2 shop, then you've got double trouble. So one of the quickest and easiest ways to improve your ability to be able to use acrylic paint, including blending, but everything else as well, is the quality of the materials that you use. So what I recommend to everybody and, and the way we teach um, in the Learn to Paint Academy is I use what's known as Artilia Interactive Acrylic Paints. These are a professional quality um, brand that a lot of professional artists use. And the advantage of this acrylic paint is that it's designed to be able to, once it's dried, to be reactivated simply with the use of water and if you choose their unlocking formula. So this particular brand, the Artilia Interactive Acrylic Paint, um, will make your life easier, right? So there's lots of different ranges of, of different acrylic paints and there's different qualities out there. And I've just found that if you get the Atelier Interactive and you learn how to use the rehydration aspect of this particular pigment, then you will get much better results with blending. It will become a lot easier for you. Um, and you've probably seen how I blend in the Learn to Paint TV show and our courses. Most of it's because I'm using a good quality paint for one with lots of pigmentation. But the other thing is, this is ideal for rehydrating. So even if it starts drying off or it's completely dry, you can reactivate it 
and that gives you more time to work back into the wet paint and, and introduce another paint to blend to it. So that would be one of my biggest tips, the quality of the paint, and I highly recommend Artillier Interactive, I don't get paid to recommend that, I just know that it's a great um, acrylic paint. And the other thing is, what are you gonna paint on? So you need to buy reasonable quality um, surfaces to paint on. This is a canvas uh, that I buy on a big roll and I roll it out and then cut out squares and it's a reasonable quality canvas, right? If you go to the $2 shop and you buy a little watercolor pad and expect to put acrylic paint down onto that and get good results and be able to blend easily, you're going to struggle. So the two things you wanna focus on, the, the quality of the brushes doesn't matter. You can paint with a branch off a tree if you need to, right? Um, but the quality of the paint, the pigment, and what you're putting it on will make a huge difference to your ability to better blend acrylic paints. So that would be my first tip. Okay, tip number two to improve your ability to be able to blend with acrylics is how much actual paint do you use? Now again, I've taught hundreds of people in one day classes and we've had 25,000 students go through our uh, Learn to Paint Academy. And I know that one of the things that they all struggle with, with, if they're having problems blending acrylic paint, it's always because of the quality of the paints which we just talked about, or the amount of the paint that they're using. Now acrylics dry fast. From the moment you squeeze it out of the tube, it's starting to dry, right? now. I've got your know, studio lights on here and it's all very, very hot and, and humid. So if I don't act fast, um, then I, you know, the, the paint dries off. But what I've also found is that the more paint that you have, that you use, the more pigment, the slower the drying time, right? Which just makes sense. A tiny little puddle of paint versus a big puddle of paint, they're gonna dry at different um, speed. So the more paint you use, the more time you've actually got to blend. So here's what a lot of beginners do. They get a little small brush and they squeeze out a little bit of paint. So this is my ultramarine blue and, and uh, permanent crimson. And let's say we want to blend those two together. So they get a little bit of the paint and we get some white into that. Okay. And we're going to do a sky on a canvas of this size. So then we start trying to make that paint now, can you see what's happening there? I've, I've only got a little bit of paint in a big area. That paint is going on very, very thin. So if I now try, if I clean my brush and then take some white with a little bit of the permanent crimson, okay, so we've got a nice pinky tone here. And my goal now is to try and blend those. Right? Well, it's kind of hard because I just don't have any pigment there to work with, right? So using a small brush on a big canvas and, a, and only a tiny little bit of paint will make it almost impossible for you to be able to blend acrylic paint together. Let's look at the approach that I use and what I teach in the Learn to Paint Academy, which is to use a reasonable amount of paint. Um, so now I know it always comes down to budget and affordability and so on, uh, but I'm going to assume that, you know, that you want to learn the best way to be able to uh, blend. So one of the best ways is by using more paint, especially on a big surface area like this. Okay, so we'll get some more white up there. So you want to use a bigger brush because it holds more paint and the more paint you have, then the, uh, the longer the time you have to work into it. So. If I take that paint there like so, okay, and I'll just get a little touch of water. Now, if I, if I apply that paint up there, which is, this is sort of how I approach painting, um, lots and lots of pigment, big brush marks, and I don't scrub it into the canvas so much, okay. If I now use that same theory and we get the whole lot of white and red, and a little touch of water. And I'll bring that up there. Now I've got, you can, hopefully you can see that on the video. I've got two sections of uh, sky where we want to blend them together, but there's plenty of pigment there. Now it's drying off while I talk to you, so you need to act reasonably fast. And the way that I would blend this, is looking for some paper towel. So I'd get some paper towel and old rag, pull most of that paint out. You don't have to clean it completely and a little bit of water in the brush 
and then those two with just a really soft feathery touch will now come together quite nicely and I can push some of that red up into the blue like so because there's plenty of pigment to move around if you're having trouble blending it's probably because you don't have enough pigment on you know you're not you're just not using enough paint um, to be able to move that paint around so you can see there the difference between the thin paint that i was using before you can't move that thin paint around because it's dried before you've even really put it down but with a, a, a more liberal helping of um the paint the amount of paint that you use you've got plenty of paint there with a little touch of water just to gently blend those two together and i do say gently with a clean brush right so pull whatever pigments in the brush out so notice i put the blue then the red then I'll pull pigment out of the out of the brush with a uh, paper towel, and then a very light touch of a little bit of water, just very gently. If you get if you press too hard, you'll sort of push those two pigments together, and the chances of you creating mud or a mess is, is much higher. Just a nice little gentle touch is all it needs, and then when that dries off, you'll see that we've got this beautiful blending of the two different uh, pigments there. So that's the second tip: use plenty of paint. Okay, tip number three now, if you're using acrylic paints and you want to blend them, and this works particularly well with the Artillia Interactive Paints, is to have a squirty bottle ready, right? So the moment you put that paint up on your palette, um, it's drying off. And, and it, depending on what brand you're using and how much pigmentation there is in that brand will determine how quickly the paint will dry off. Some pigments just dry quicker than others, like the yellow ochre always tends to come out a little bit clumpier um, than say the permanent crimson or the ultramarine blue. So, um, you, you know, put it up on your palette or down on your palette, it's gonna start drying off straight away. So I've started now using a little squirty bottle like this. Now, I have to warn you, I've tried buying, you know, ones like this that come with the actual brand of paint no good so i went to the garden store for two dollars and got a little squirty bottle and what you want to do is just you know periodically is just give a little spray to your palette like that i don't know if i was standing in the way there so i'll just do it again just a couple of little squirts onto the paint on your palette will help immensely and then if i want to come back in here and work into this area of the sky um well yeah, so what I do is I just from about this distance, that's about a metre, maybe two metres, you don't want to be right up here. You watch what happens if I'm right up here, right? It all runs down. Now that can be interesting effects for abstract painting, but for most of us, we're better off over about a metre away and just a very light misting spray like that. And if I grab a dry brush, what happens is that just makes all of that paint then more pliable. Now again, you have to have plenty of pigment there. Okay, but you can see I can just move that paint around quite easily and we're getting a nice integration of the two. You can overwork it though, so be careful you don't overwork it. But, you know, acrylic paint is a water-based medium, little spray, you don't need much, right? Because you can see what happens if you use too much. It sort of just moves all the pigment out of the way and it all runs. But just a very light, gentle misting um, of it and it'll help you to keep working and keep those uh, that pigment hydrated so you can keep working with it okay now tip number four is to use a medium to help your paint move help that pigment be uh, more pliable and give you more time to work with it so in the artillery interactive range they have this liquefying medium i use this a lot for my bigger paintings right uh, it just makes the paint move easier and uh, gives you more time to work into the paint. So what I do, I've got a desktop palette, which I pour out a puddle and then I make my mix of whatever colors I need. And then I scoop up some of this liquefying medium and I put that into my mix and then the whole thing just flows a lot easier, gives you more time to blend. Now, because I've got the palette up there, I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this directly, but what I'll do is I'll just put a little puddle of this and just on my desktop and it comes out in a white creamy white liquid and um, I'll see if I can get a little bit of heat here for you so you can see that on there right it's just quite creamy white liquid and if I get some titanium white now it doesn't affect the color you can see the yellow ochre is a lot thicker okay it doesn't affect the color at all even though it's a creamy white um, it will not have any impact so I'll mix up my, my pigment like that. I want to 
uh, a light yellow ochre and then I'll scoop up some of this flow medium. And you can see there it's just made, of, you can see the drier edges around there and then you've got this nice moist area here. And then what that means is I can now just come in here and um, just very lightly, I've got a bit of blue in there. So, so now we're getting sort of like a setting sun effect with that dusk. You're getting that pinky bluey sky at the top and the um, yellow where the sun's glowing on the horizon. And we can just pull it up and do that like so. Okay, so that's the next tip is to use the medium. Now what I find is whatever brand of paint that you're using, they usually have a range of mediums um, that go with their particular brand of paint. It's always a good idea to get the medium created by the creator of the paint, I think. Now I might be completely wrong, maybe it's a bit of a superstition, but you know, if I'm gonna use the Artillery Interactive um, professional brand of acrylic paints, I wanna make sure I use their medium as well for best effect. There might be other mediums I could use, but for best effect, and for better you know, movement of the pigment and blending, then I'm gonna use the one that the uh, actual brand itself has created. And it, you know, it goes a long way, there's plenty of it there. And if I just pop it in there, you can see that it just becomes um, more moist and it just gives me more time to work into um, our pigments. Now the one thing is, you wanna make sure you get a clean brush because if you're using the same puddle for different colors, then you know, you can dirty up your colors pretty quickly. So just always make sure you're pulling pigment out with a paper towel and um, you should be right. And again, with blending, it's a nice soft edge. Now I'm over blending all of this. It's gonna start turning into mud a bit, but you can see we've now connected the yellow to the pink into the blue. So that's tip number four. Use the medium designed to help uh, with the flow of the pigment and you should be able to get better effects with blending. Okay, that's tip number five now, is to move fast. Because as we've said, the moment you put that paint out, you, uh, you can expect that paint to start drying unless you're in freezing conditions. Um, so it's gonna start drying straight away. And basically what's happening is the moisture, the uh, H2O and it's evaporating. So it's gonna dry off really, really quickly. So tip number five is to move fast. You know, think ahead as to what it is that you're doing and um, plan ahead so that you, if I'm gonna paint the sky, I'm gonna do it all in one hit. I'm not gonna put a bit of blue down and then go and make a cup of tea uh, because that'll be dry by the time I come back. So if I know I'm gonna paint a sky with blues and pinks and yellows, I wanna you know, get a, an idea in my head of that's what we're gonna do, that's the plan. And then I wanna work fast from, from the time I start to the time I finish off the sky area. Um, I wanna work fast doing that, right? Um, so speed is definitely one of the big factors in being able to use acrylic paints really well and being able to blend because the paint's still open, it still um, has moisture in it, making it easier to blend. So paint fast. Now, I think that's probably not a bad philosophy with acrylics in general. Um, there are approaches where you can do a layer and let it dry and so on, but I think acrylics work really well more spontaneously and, and painting fast definitely helps with that. So friends, there are five tips to help you be able to blend your acrylic paints better and to get better results with your acrylic paints. I hope they've helped. I'd love to hear your feedback um, and your questions and so on. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it, comment and share. And uh, you know, let me know what else you'd like to know about acrylic paints in the comments and I'll do future art studio chats like this to help answer all your questions about acrylic paint or any other aspect of painting as well. So my name's Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy. If you haven't done so already, drop by the Learn to Paint Academy and register for a free painting course where I go into our approach, the Moore Method of Painting, to help you get started in your journey with painting. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Art Studio Chat. Cheers for now.